If the top ranked team in the country is making its first SEC visit to Columbia, you're going to arrive at the game no matter what the form of transportation. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS as the Crimson Tide comes to Columbia to take on the Missouri Tigers. A, long, a, a large line of thunderstorms approaching from the west, so we could have thunderstorms throughout this game. It will apparently affect play. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Welcome to Columbia, our first visit here. And Gary, Alabama arrives, top ranked, both polls, winners of the national title two out of the last three years. I assume you concur they're the best team. Yeah, Why? I, I do, Vern. I mean, not only are the thunderstorms, there's a long line, a large line of offensive linemen, defensive linemen, and players. What's happened here with Nick Saban in Alabama is the program has been built. Four or five years of top recruiting classes, great competition competition on the practice field. They've set the tone for how they need to win football games, and now they definitely are the team to beat. Well, Nick Saban known for his defensive prowess, but now they've got an offense that is equally uh, favored in most of these games. Absolutely. You know, Vern, I've talked a long time about in this conference, you can have a lot of playmakers on the offense and the defensive line, but you got to have a quarterback to win the championship. Last year, Nick Saban and his staff brought A.J. McCarron along a little slowly, but you saw in the second half of the year, he became a guy who could win games with his uh, with his arm but as you mentioned he does play behind one of the great offensive lines in college football watch this play early in the year against Michigan five offensive linemen two tight ends that's seven perfect blocks you bring down the slot back on the right side that's number eight the wide receiver downfield there's number nine. You got the ball carrier number 10 and the quarterback handed off. That's 11 guys on a perfect play. You see that a lot when you watch tape of Alabama run the ball. Well, this Missouri fan base has so anticipated the arrival of Alabama here as an SEC opponent. But they're a bunch of wounded Tigers yeah. right now, offensive line and quarterback. I feel a little bad for the Missouri faithful. Gary Pickle, he's made his uh, kind of reputation with offense, a spread offense in the Big 12. I think even in the Big 12, he'd be wounded. They've got a lot of young players playing in the offensive line, and the matchup is going to be difficult for them. And besides that, they lost their quarterback, a running quarterback, Corbin Beckstrasser. Their redshirt freshman quarterback will have to do it. His style is to throw the football. He's not going to run a lot because he doesn't have much depth behind him, and he's going to have to do it against one of the great pass rushes in college football, too. Alabama, obviously, an overwhelming favorite to win this game. You and I have been around long enough. We have seen upsets. If Missouri is to win, what must they get from whom? Well, if there's a blueprint to do it, I think you got to look to your playmakers on both sides of the ball, and Missouri's got a couple. If Sheldon Richardson could make an impact in the middle of the offensive line, maybe force the Alabama offense to devote another blocker to, to him, they might free up a few other guys to make some tackles. And on offense, I think they go to... They're T.J. Moe. They're kind of their Wes Welker of this offense. He caught eight balls from Beck Berkstresser the last time he started the game. I'd go to him at least 10 receptions in the football game. Alabama Crimson tied undefeated. Missouri Tigers 3-3, three 0-3 and three, oh and three in the SEC. Back with more after this. To the house, touchdown Missouri, hit and drop. to Foro Field, Columbia, Missouri, home field of the University of Missouri Tigers. Moments ago, they were first on the field. You see the graphic, 0-12 all-time against top-ranked AP teams. And right behind them, the top-ranked AP team in the country. That stands for Associated Press. 35 straight wins 
against unranked teams. We welcome you again to the Home Depot SEC on CBS, the undefeated Alabama Crimson Tide, and the 3-3 three and three Missouri Tigers. One of those defeats occurred here at home last Saturday. They were overwhelming favorites to defeat Vanderbilt. They lost 19 to 15. It was an emotional defeat. For more, let's go down to Tracy Wilson. That's right, Vern. There was a lot of frustration after that game, and you can hear shouts of anger through the locker room walls afterwards. And I asked Gary Pinkle, he said there was no negativity. It was just leaders making their feelings known. One of those leaders, defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson, who said, I was frustrated. Just emotions coming out. We put a lot into this, put hours of planning, hours of practice. We put a lot into the season, and we want more than we were getting out of it. And he said, we're tired of losing in the SEC so it's time for a wake-up call and guys they're hoping that begins today with an upset of number one Alabama well they're gonna have to get nearly perfect execution to win. well if everybody on his team plays with the intensity of Sheldon Richardson they've got you know their best shot that's their only shot they have to have that type of ten intensity first meeting in the Gator Bowl in 1968 last meeting 1978 Missouri one of the rare teams who can claim to have a series edge over the Crimson Tide you're looking at Dean Milner the rain has just begun this is Baggett who will kick off here in Columbia Missouri won the toss deferred so Alabama will open on offense here's the kick it's a good one And A.J. McCarron, Gary mentioned in the uh, open of this telecast that he's yet to throw an interception this year, goes back eight games, 17 and one as a starting quarterback. You know, and what I like about him is he is, by nature, a gunslinger. He really wants to fire it all over the field, but he's accepted the coaching and he's learned to play the position the way Nick and his staff wants him to. 15 and 1 in October under Nick Saban. Play fake. McCarron slings it out to Kelly Johnson, the H back. And uh, Johnson on the completed pass picks up a modest gain. Quanjo Warmack may be the best of this offensive line. Jones, Steen, and DJ Fluker. You could make an argument for him. <laughs> They've got a great offensive line. Amari Cooper, the freshman, his first start. Michael Williams, Lacey in the backfield, Kevin Norwood, and Christian Jones complete the starting lineup. Power run, Lacey into the secondary, breaks a tackle. One man to beat. Does a little inside move. Now he's got another man to beat, and he's got the angle. Edra Lacey in for the touchdown. 73 yards. Not too tough. This time it was Anthony Steen, number 61, coming around. And then Braylon Webb, number nine, was the only guy that had an early shot at him. But you know, Lacey is 235, 40 pounds, and you saw the cutback. I mean, we've been watching Alabama do this for a while. No matter who they hand it to, they got a guy that looks just like that. Second play from scrimmage. Shelley with the extra point. It is up and through. Well, Last night when we talked to Nick, he said our favorite formation is three wide outs, one tight end, and we like to run it from there. He was pretty darn right, wasn't he? If you're a Missouri fan, it's gotten even gloomier here on the opening series. Eddie Lacy from 73. And now for a look from our Avis action cam. You know, Vern, when I was uh, talking in the open, I was saying that they had 9, 10 blocks on this one because of the stunt by Missouri and Steen coming around and Jones coming inside there to get the block. Missouri kind of ran away from this run. The wrong stunt at the wrong time. Jones gets his block. Steen fits. One missed tackle in the secondary by number 9, Webb. And the big guy's in some space, makes a late guy miss and cuts across the field. When you're trying to move your undersized defensive lineman and you caught, get caught in a bad stunt, bad things happen. 
Kate Foster will kick off for the Crimson Tide. T.J. Moe, number 28, back to return it. If possible, it is not. It'll come out to the 25. Well, getting his second start of the season, redshirt freshman Corbin Berkstresser played and started in the Arizona State game, did not play well last week in relief. No, but I thought he looked pretty good when I watched the tape against Arizona State. When you're coming in relief as a young player, you don't get him any snaps in practice. He had all the snaps this week, so we will see. I would assume that the rain has to favor Alabama. Missouri's trying to throw the ball around in a finesse offense, you would assume. Nine of 30 in relief of James Franklin last week. A little safety valve pass out of the right. That's Kendall Lawrence, and let's introduce you to the remainder of the Chick-fil-A. Starting lineups, Fisher, Bame, McNulty, Copeland, and Justin Britt. Three starters not in that lineup. You see two freshmen are starting. Washington Waters, Lawrence, who just caught the pass, T.J. Moe, and Bud Sasser getting his first start of the season as a wideout. 85-yard reception against Vanderbilt last week. Bergstresser, right side. Defensively for the Crimson Tide, and they're number one in a number of categories across the country. Stinson, Jesse Williams, and Damian Square up front. The linebackers, Dixon, DePriest, and C.J. Mosley gets the start against this pass-happy offense. Blue, Sonseri, Lester, Clinton Dix, and Milner, three safeties and two cornerbacks. Third down eight. Low snap. Rush. Just did get rid of it. Incomplete pass. Vern, it's the same blitz that Vanderbilt ran numerous times against Missouri last week. Three-man line bringing the linebackers inside. They were unblocked all last week. Alabama says, well, we might as well try it. Maybe, you know, maybe they haven't figured out how to pick it up yet, and they didn't there. And you know that for Missouri, that's another bad trend. For the year, they have not started off a drive in the game with any points, and they didn't get any there. On the part of Trey Barrow had one slip through his hands for a safety last week. He gets oh, rid of this one. Punt. It is a terrific punt. Over the shoulder catch is Christian Jones oh, yeah. nailed near the five-yard line. Donovan Bonner. That was a big mistake by Christian Jones. You put your feet on the 10-yard line, you don't go backwards. 71-yard punt. Well, looking for a glimmer. They got one. Time called. Welcome back to Columbia, Missouri. Alabama 7 to nothing. Missouri's defense, and they really have played quite well for most of this year. Ely Richardson, you heard Gary talk about him. Matt Hoke and uh, Madison, the other defensive end. Gooden, Will Ebner, the leader of the senior, uh, senior group. Andrew Wilson, the junior. And in the secondary, Edwards, Walker, Webb, and perhaps the best there, E.J. Gaines. Ball was marked at the eight-yard line. Second Alabama possession. This will be the third play from scrimmage, and they're up 7-0. Norwood in motion, sets up tight right. Hand it off to Lacey, who leaves his way. Here we go again. Oh, dear. Well, Gary Pinkle's going to have to get his football team from being down in the dumps right now. You work all week telling them that they can compete with the number one team in the nation and two running plays. You don't even touch him at the line of scrimmage until he gets into secondary. That is deflating to a football team, and that's what a running game does. It can deflate you early and deflate you late and deflate you in the middle, too, if you can do it. Hand off on the sweep to Christian Jones. He breaks the tackle, and then Richardson gets up to him. Yeah, Gary Pinkle has told us yesterday, I've never coached a game in my life. I didn't think we could win. He says, there's a way, there's a path. We can do this. He told his team at practice on Thursday, we can win this football game. I don't know if he had to talk them into it or not, but right now he needs to get them thinking that they can do it again. Freshman running back T.J. Yeldon in the backfield. Play action. Oh, great play by How McCarron. about that? That's Michael Williams, the tight end. 
And he almost breaks another tackle. Burn, this was into a corner blitz. And he's turned the wrong way, but reads it prior to the snap. He senses the corner coming from his blind side, turns around, and lets it go. That is coaching. That's aware. See him. Look at him start to pee. He anticipated the corner blitz and got rid of it. That is, you can't do it any better than that. Three plays now in the last two possessions. 73 yards, 18 yards, 17 yards. McCarron steps up. He'll tuck it, and he will run, and he will get out of bounds. Number 10, A.J. McCarron, ball carrier. Well, A.J. McCarron, his second year as a starter. 2011 through five games, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Look at the numbers for this year. I, I do know that, and that is true, but last year what stuck out is he's always been a high percentage passer. He's been managed that way, and he's accepted the coaching. I gotta go back to that quick little throw on the bootleg. That's what why Greg McElroy was so effective in this offense. He would not get those negative plays and kept moving the chains. Second down four, Yeldon. The true freshman is still the running back. He gets the handoff, comes right, cuts inside, gets a good block downfield from Christian Jones. And uh, wow, what an impressive start offensively for Alabama. Well, defensive coordinator David Steckel for Missouri has actually tried to pull out all the stops in this game. We saw him stunting inside to stop the run with the big touchdown run by Lacey. That time, the time before, they had an all-out blitz. That time he played at base. Nothing has worked. They're getting blocked. Another first down. And we've uh, only played four minutes, eight seconds. Draw play. Yeldon. Hit from behind. After he was stopped. Well, T.J. yelled in the opening game against Michigan, 100, 101 yards. And the last four, uh, slightly less impressive figures. But getting an early go here. McCarron. Eddie Lacy had the touchdown run, 73 yards. Barrett Jones will snap it back. See the line call being made on the change. Quick flip, Christian Jones. Nice defense. Kip Edwards, number one, quarterback. That's a loss of three. And the first negative play for Alabama's offense. The numbers suggested on this play that there's an option either to hand the ball off or throw the ball to the outside. Kip, Kip Edwards defeated the block by the other wide receiver and busted the play. That brings up third down and nine. Marvin Shin, the fourth wide receiver, is on. Amari Cooper goes left. Let's see if Missouri will dare blitz. It does look like they are going to blitz. On third and nine. No baiting, no. baiting it. McCarron left side. He thought it too. Fourth down. First time A.J. McCarron was fooled a bit on the play, but we do have a flag on the throw. Is it hitting the quarterback low? Watch. Baiting the blitz. They're both going to come out this way. Safety's going to go out. Two safeties. So a win by the Missouri defense. It does appear to be against Alabama, too. Referee today, Tom Ritter. Interesting to see. Number 65, offense, 10-yard penalty, replay for a down. Interesting decision by Gary Pinkle. He probably felt Alabama was in field goal range, even though it was against the wind. So he's going to give him another chance to throw the football here. Fourth and nine versus third and 19. Third yeah. And 19. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you have to take these gambles to win a football game. Four wides. Sheldon Richardson almost got through. Little screen over to the left to Eddie Lacy, and it will now be fourth down as Kip Edwards makes the tackle. 
Well, we talked about Sheldon Richardson being one of the great defensive tackles in this league. He's earned the respect of every offensive coordinator and lineman who watch him on tape. Very athletic, very smart at the end there, too. Could not get a penalty and give his team a first down. He had one of those late, excuse me, on a punt against Vanderbilt that really hurt the football team. Very smart play. And so fourth and 11, Mandel is on to punt. And Marcus Murphy with three touchdowns returned on punts this year. This one. Oh, wow. Uh, the, uh, the defender, I thought Vinny Sinceri should have caught that ball that time. He, was that him down there? I couldn't tell if it was number three or not, but I thought that ball could have been caught. And well, it does come back to the 12-yard line. And time has been called. Nick Saban and Gary Pinkle, the respected head coaches, have known each other since they were teammates at Kent State more than 40 years ago. For more, let's go outside the huddle. Here's Tracy Wilson. Well, thanks, Vern. The two played together in 1972 at Kent State, Saban a DB and Pinkle a tight end. Together, they guided their team to its first and only Mid-American Championship. Their head coach, Don James, was a guiding influence in both of their careers. Saban's first head coaching job was at Toledo in 1990 when he left to go to the Browns. He got Gary Pinkle an interview, and Pinkle got the job. The two have gone their separate ways since, but both have tremendous respect for one another. Well, he was a better player than I was, I can tell you that. So he was a very good tight end, a really good competitor, a good guy, good leader on the team. It's kind of interesting to see how it all worked out. Uh, uh, he's had a uh, remarkable amount of success, and I've, I, I've had some too, so it's a... Uh, it's, uh, he's done a great job. He's a great coach and good friend. And guys, Don James is watching from his home in Washington. The problem is he doesn't know who to root for. Good point, Trace. You know who the third and probably most well-known teammate was? I, I do know, but go ahead. A guy named Jack Lambert. Two sitting right next to Nick almost. And there it is. That's what they're trying to do. Get Kendall Lawrence. Lawrence. Yep. To David Yost, the offensive co coordinator, I said, how are you going to run the ball against Alabama? He said, we need to try to press the edge. I know they don't like people to run wide on them, but we need to try it. We cannot try to run inside against them, and Lawrence read this, cut back, and got the positive play. That was a gain of 22, the first Missouri first down in the 7 nothing ball game. There's Wildcat, right? That's the Wildcat, and that is Kendall Lawrence. We'll see uh, Lawrence and T.J. Moe in the Wildcat today. Yeah, and I think the big difference in this team this year is the amount of running from this football team from last year to this year. And one of the reasons is James Franklin got a lot of those runs himself from the quarterback position, so you see they go to the Wildcat to make that up. Now Burke Stresser back in on second down and eight. That one's tipped and knocked down by Milner. <laughs> Looked like Jesse Williams, the nose guard, got it. Vern, watching tape, uh, Corbin had about six passes knocked down by Vanderbilt. When I went out to practice Thursday, he had Corbin Brooksresser throwing over the crossbar, trying to reach his ball up just a little bit higher. He made sure that all his throws was right across the edge, right there. Well, he's got his first knock down here, and it was the nose guard who got him. Now Brooksresser, five wides. Three-man rush. Stinson coming from the outside. That one is intercepted by Sanceri. Vinny Sanceri got the tip, grabbed it, and Alabama has the ball. And this was a pretty good throw right here. You got it. Remember, to win these type of games, someone's got to make a play. They're not going to be easy against Alabama. This time, decent protection three men coming across the middle the ball slightly behind but look at the Jepson Seri does staying with the tip ball one of those ones where you're saying come on guys can you help the young quarterback and in this case it's a no regional action tomorrow the NFL on CBS early game features Indianapolis at the Jets Three others alongside. And the late game, New England at Seattle or Buffalo at Arizona. And it all begins with James Brown and the quartet. 
The NFL today on CBS 12 noon Eastern presented by Southwest Airlines. Take a look at the uh, turnover margin, the difference. Alabama is now 416. They've only given up the ball three times all year. First down and 10 on the first turnover of this game. Eddie Lacy is back in there. Toss back to McCarron. Looks deep. Kenny Bell is deep. Did he get it? Yes, he got it. The fastest of the wide receivers. Kenny Bell, that's a gain of 44. I asked Nick yesterday, you're going to try to play it close to the vest? He says, no way. Let's go for it. Win this thing. EJ gains too much of a cushion to the outside, and Kenny Bell accelerates right by. EJ gains one of the best. He was an all Big 12 cornerback last year, and Kenny Bell just ran down that throw. Three wides, one setback. This is Lacey, gets it, goes left. Gets a block from Kenny Bell on the edge. And he's down to about the two and a half. Braylon Webb, number nine, makes the tackle. Well, when you begin, the second play of the game was a 73-yarder. That helps that average. Jesse Williams coming into the game now with that uh, Terrence Cody package. Remember that? Uh, I remember Terrence Cody blocking. A couple of field goals in one game. There's the big nose tackle right there. <laughs> Lacey is behind him, although you can't see him if you're Missouri. Touchdown, Lacey. When you have an offensive line with Jones, Ormack, Steen, Fluker, Quanjo, and then you bring in Williams to kind of plow through it also, and Lacey's almost as big as those guys. They are showing that grown man football look to Missouri again, aren't they? Shelley has not missed an extra point. And that record stays intact. Three-yard run, Lacey behind Jesse Williams. Brings the applause from Nick Saban. Another look at it. Lacey, second TD of the game. Don't you dare touch that remote. As you can tell from the attire, this uh, line of thunderstorms not totally unexpected, some choosing to enjoy it more than others, and in different ways. Line of thunderstorms moved through just about the time we had kickoff. He used a water-based paint, didn't he? <laughs> Needs those oil paints. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 14 zip, 6.07 to go in the first quarter. Kate Foster will kick off. Marcus Murphy is the deep man. Foster can boom it, but this one will be returned. Not far. Get live score updates for all of your favorite teams with the new CBS Sportcaster app for iPhone and Android. Text SCORE to 42777 to get the free app. Which bother you more, rain or wind? As a quarterback. The guys on the defensive side. <laughs> Thank you. We were indoors here most of the time. You know? yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Um, you know, if it gets real heavy like this and the balls get heavy, yeah, it could be a big problem. But for the most part, wind. Yeah, for the most part. Burke Stresser has been intercepted once. That on a tip ball. Reverse. DJ Moe. Adrian Hubbard stayed home that time, number 42. We talked about the rushing difference from a year ago for Missouri, and it's why their offense is not clicking. With James Franklin, they just ran the ball better. They rushed for 216 yards a game in, against the first three teams in the Big 12. The first three in the SEC, 120 a game. Nine rush touchdowns in those first three Big 12 games, games one, two, and three. They have not had a rushing touchdown against an SEC team this year. 
That was Kendall Lawrence with the carry. He's got uh, 26 yards on three now. Third down conversions from three to seven yards. You see their 10th in the SEC in that conversion rate. This is when they went to Mo against Arizona State. He had many of them on third down. Let's see if they go to him again. Indeed. And, and that, it's a conversion. That's his go-to guy. And I think if I was calling plays for Missouri, I would try to create a pressure point. Make him a Wes Welker type player. Kind of count on the fact that Kirby Smart and Nick Saban don't like to give up yards. They got a lot of pride. Maybe they'll tilt too much towards him and open up something else. Now Burke Stresser converts to Mo when Burke Stresser made his official visit here. It was TJ Mo who served as his host is going deep into double coverage left side. And that one. Good defensive coverage from Robert Lester is intended for Bud Sasser. The reason two guys was covering the deep player is because I think T.J. Mo busted on this play. I was watching him. He did not know it was a pass. He comes down here and blocks and actually cleans up the play. Watch him. He comes out. He thinks it's a run play. That allows the safety to help deep on the play. Lester's able to help, and nothing's there. Second down, 10. coming down now. It is raining. I don't know if you can tell on that picture, but I'm telling you, it is raining. Kendall Lawrence, so you heard the hit from D. Milner, the first contact there, and then C.J. Mosley. You can certainly tell on that picture how hard it's coming down. Now, the worst of this stuff, this line might move through, but they're expecting more later tonight. Yeah, right through, move through by tomorrow. That's what yeah. I <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let's see if this can, protection wise, if Alabama can put some pressure on Burke Stresser. We'll do it again. CJ Mosley yeah. got him. Two sacks for Mosley here in the first quarter. And this time they attack right over that center position where the change has been made. There's Mosley. Got a young player in there, hasn't played a lot of center, runs right by Brad McNulty and makes the sack. The other sack was a missed assignment. This was just an inability to block a good football player. And when you're an offensive coordinator trying to find plays in that rain against this team, not much there. Trey Barrow on the punt. He boomed one 71 yards. Oh. They go to the block and they've got it. That's an Alabama block. From Landon Collins. Exactly who it was. He almost got the one before. I think he was right in the middle, and there's a three-man protection he ran right through. Heard a great call here. There's got so many guys in the 20s. I think he's right in the middle. I don't know if it's that one right there or not. He comes right up the guts on the other side. Yeah. He runs right through two guys. You're not allowed to jump over the blockers. And I would assume that Missouri doesn't want you to run right through the blockers either. That Missouri got called on leaping over a personal protector last yep. week. That was that call on Richardson. Landon Collins with the punt block. And in a driving rainstorm, yes, yes. A.J. McCarron hands it off. This goes to Yeldon. Tries to get the block on the edge. He's inside the 10. They go for the strip and don't get it. That was Kentron Walker who tried to force the ball out. It's funny, I've been reading a lot of articles about Alabama football and where might they be vulnerable? Some people might speculate that they don't have the depth at running back because of a couple of injuries. But these two guys look pretty good, don't they? <laughs> Michael Williams that time, number 89, got a great block on the edge, and that's what allowed Yeldon to get downfield. Jesse Williams back in as the blocking back. The huge Australian nose guard play action. Nope, he handed it. I, I beg your pardon. He did. Yeldon, nothing. Or almost nothing. Well, I would... Alabama's been pretty good. Inside the red zone, the Verizon red zone stats.
second down goal. Still Yeldon. And there's the signal. Touchdown. Touchdown, Alabama. This time he runs right behind number 65, Warmack, and number 54, Jesse Williams. Warmack pulls and kicks out. Jesse Williams also kicks out, and just enough to get across the line. There's Jesse Williams, one of four Australian non punters in Division I. Gotcha. There are 13 Australian punters. Might have something to do with Australian rules football. Extra point is up and good. Yeldon with the TD, Williams with the block. The pride of Brisbane, Australia. 21 6. Well, you see Jesse Hall, the administrative headquarters at the University of Missouri, through the raindrops. Time to go back to the studio for a John Hancock update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Vern, after trading field goals in the first overtime, second overtime period, Andrew Maxwell of Michigan State picked off by Greg Castillo. Iowa gets the win, the 100th career win for the Hawkeyes for Coach Kirk Ferentz, and for the moment, sits atop the legends. Back to you. Glad you clarified that. I didn't know whether it was <laughs> legends or leaders. I'd get confused easily. Well, various ways to not be affected by the rain. Kate Foster will kick off. At the goal line, Marcus Murphy. Christian Jones and friends hauling down. I'm taking another look dur uh, during the commercial. This <laughs> Studying for exams right after yeah. the game is over. The guy's got to update his logo right there. Yeah. He's got last year's logo. <laughs> First down, 10. You know, Vern, uh, I think coaches are going to have to start kind of mandating their kick return guys not to return them if they're really close to the goal line. Look at this field position. Because the defenders are five yards closer, it's made them tougher to get the ball out to the 20-yard line. That's T.J. Moe. Yeah, they were, uh, what, at the 15 to start this drive. Exactly. And what's happening is the coaches have adjusted here. They've, they've got their, instead of giving the ball to the offense in the 25-yard line by kicking it out of the end zone, they're kicking it higher. The return team is five yards closer, and they're running it down. Now, the object of the rule was to put some more safety into it. So far, it's not working all that much. Again, of seven, second and three. These coaches are smart. They work 100 hours a week. They got to do something, right? <laughs> well, an option play. Option this ain't going to work. Nope. No. Oh, come on. Ball's out, but it appears to have been recovered by Missouri. <laughs> Eric Waters, number 81, fell on it. Dean Milner knocked it out. And again, Adrian Hubbard did his job. Milner comes up, does his job. I don't believe the Alabama DBs are kind of stressing too much for Burke stress or throwing the ball over their heads. They figure the pass rush will get them. Here's that three-man line. Let's see if they bring the linebackers again. Hubbard is coming, and so is C.J. Mosley. Burke Stresser. Oh, nice play. And Mo drops it. Yes, it was. Come on, T.J. Mo. I know it's a wet football, but you've got a young freshman back there playing against Alabama, taking a shot right in the chest, throws the football right to you, and that had been a first down, and you get a drop from your steady senior. All the mistakes have been on the Missouri sideline so far. And as a result, down 21 to nothing. Barrow on the punt.
Christian Jones drifts back, grabs it at the 20. Heads to his left, looks for blocks, gets one. Tries to get... Oh, he's oh my goodness. Hit and somersaults out across the 50-yard line <laughs> by the punter. Yes. Trey Barrow. He saw Trey Barrow going low on the tackle, and he kind of did the somersault himself. Firm. He anticipated it. Watch this. He tried to leap him, and Barrel got him right on the feet and shin, and that's what called the somersault. <laughs> you know, he did not try to do that himself. He got those legs <laughs> taken right out from under him. E.J. Gaines injured on the punt return. And that is the end of the first quarter. It's been all Alabama. 21-0 Crimson Tide will return to Memorial Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. I'm a streaker. I'm three. We welcome you back to the Zoo 4 -0 Field in Columbia, Missouri. Take a look at the weather map. We had a line of thunderstorms that began to come through the stadium right about the time of kickoff. And this is the motion of the uh, storms moving to the north. A lightning strike was reported a little more than 10 miles to the north. And there was a consultation uh, during the timeout, during the commercial. And we are moving on. Now I have a question about these folks to be continued. <laughs> Nothing. Might rather sit on the grass than the. Well, that's what. That's my question. Benches, though. <laughs> well, that's a good point there. Here's McCarran under some pressure, throws it deep. It's caught by Norwood, and Norwood with yet another completion as Alabama has roared in this ball game. Uh, where do you want to go with this? Uh, I mean, there's so many superlatives we could attach to what we've seen from the Crimson. Well, Missouri's not playing good enough football themselves. Right. So let alone what Alabama's doing, when they have the opportunity to make some plays, I mean, it, a couple drop balls, they can't pick up a blitz, uh, you know, a, a simple blitz. It's one thing not being able to block them, but when you're beating yourself, that's another whole area. Lacey, who scored in the second play of the game from 73 yards out, has that carry. First four possessions, one punt, three touchdowns. And McCarron in the rain, six of six, 83 yards. He has extended his streak of consecutive passes without an interception to 202. That is an Alabama school record. The old record held by Brody Coyle, 190. Lacey goes right, gets a block from Barrett Jones. And others on the outside, particularly DJ Fluker. I think that was DJ Fluker, the tight end that wrapped around, excuse me, the tackle that wrapped around the tight end. Let's see if he pops around and makes the play. Yes, it is Fluker again, sealed off by Michael Williams, and Fluker is downfield. He's a huge man, and he pops up afterwards and kind of starts celebrating after the play. He knows he's got one of those highlight blocks. <laughs> 6'6", 335. And uh, large patches of this sellout crowd have said, the heck with this, they've headed for the exits. Lacey with six carries, 107 yards. McCarron deep right side, man-for-man -man coverage. Diving try from Norwood. Andy Ponder had good coverage that time. Nowhere for the ball to go, but the ball was thrown to the perfect spot where either the Alabama player catches it, Norwood, or nobody else. Second down, 10. Lacey. Kluger again with the block. Lacey up and over. And he's inside the 20. 
E.J. Gaines was entered, uh, injured at the end of the first quarter. Let's get more from Tracy. Well, guys, he actually injured that right shoulder early in the game on the first drive and then re-injured it right at the end of the first quarter. And trainers are just on the sidelines right now taking a look at him. No word on whether he will return, but he is in obvious pain. A big hit for Missouri if he cannot return, guys. All right. Thank you, Trace. Third and three. Alabama brings in because of that shortage four wide receivers. McCarron, watch out from behind. Fumble. Recovered by Missouri. That is only the fourth turnover of the year for the Crimson Tide. Michael Sam. I think that's who it was. Knocked it out. I think that's who it was. Came in from the edge. When AJ goes upfield, Sam comes from behind, number 52, and slams it out. That's how it happens to quarterbacks all the time. You're holding that ball in your passing hand. You start to run, and all of a sudden, somebody from behind grabs it. The first bit of good news for Missouri in this football game. Okay. Alabama turns it over. They still do lead 21 to nothing over the Tigers of Missouri early in the second quarter. Standing in the rain in cities today, James Franklin. Starting quarterback, this is the second game he's missed. First of all, missed the start against Arizona State because of inflamed bursa sack in his throwing shoulder. And then last week, he injured his knee, strained left MCL in the game against Vandy. So James Franklin, very much a running threat. Right out of uniform yeah both a you know a run passing threat you know and that was really what this offense was built around this year on first down 10 handoff <laughs> coming right side you know Vern, one of the things that i thought about that might stress alabama this year was they were going to face more quarterbacks on the road that had a pulse basically that could throw the ball against them. Denard Robinson didn't show up against them, or Alabama forced him not to show up. But Tyler Wilson and now James Franklin have both been replaced by freshman Tyler Bray is the next one coming up at Tennessee. And that's next week when Alabama visits Knoxville. Second down and four. Jimmy Hunt with the last carry. Brooks Dresser goes deep, double coverage, intercepted. Nope, nope, nope. Yep. Had it, dropped it. And Deion, Deion Blue. Deion Blue did a nice job of feeling the football up in the air, turning around and making the play. Ball slightly underthrown. Ball comes loose, but that is the technique that you have to have. If you're going to play corner for Alabama, you must be comfortable with the ball in the air because he'll stress you. Kirby Smart, Nick Saban will put you in man to man and force you to make those plays. Now trying to make something after they recover the fumble. Third down and four from Missouri. Burt Strasser. It'll be fourth down. And Stinson got that tackle. One of the things that Alabama will not do a lot in this football game is open up the middle of the field. See that right there? They're going to keep a safety in the middle. Ha-ha, Clinton Dix is going to say, you might complete a first down, but we're not going to give you a cheap touchdown against us. They're going to force the man-to-man, -man, but they're not going to allow you to throw the deep ball against no free safety. Andre Burton has had punts already in the game of 61 and 71. This one, he's also had one block. This is from his own Landon Collins, who had that walk, comes on the rush, diving catch made by Christian Jones. 38-yard punt. 21 zip. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC continues after this word from your local station. have not had their enthusiasm diminished despite the score and the weather conditions 21 nothing as Truman the mascot 
And it leads us to our CBS poll question. Log on to Facebook.com, SEC on CBS, and the question. Give us your favorite Tiger mascot of the SEC. You've got Aubie at Auburn, Mike at LSU, and Truman here at Missouri. First down. T.J. Yeldon, play action. Christian Jones on the receiving end of the McCarran pass. Nice move. Missed tackle in the open field. Randy Ponder was the uh, man who missed the tackle. Well, one other thing that Doug Nussmeyer, the new offensive coordinator, is doing for Alabama is spreading the football around to all the different talent on this football team. A.J. McCarron was asked, who's your favorite? You got none of them. The play is, goes to where the play goes. I got confidence in them all. McCarron now seven of eight. Draw play. Yeldon. Kenny Bell with a little brush block on the outside. And the tackle is made by Braylon Webb, number nine. Look at the patience this time by the freshman T.J. Yeldon. He knows that offensive line is eventually going to get an opening and gets to outside. And on this field turf, almost a horse collar there, but let go by the officiating crew. They'll play again, up the middle again. Inside the five again. Nice read that time. Chance Warmack was coming around and you're designed to follow the guard, but he sees the opening behind the guard. Look, Warmack comes around, but watch Yeldon backdoor it. Right from the back side. Again, Barrett Jones getting a block. You know, Vern, I, I do agree with you that Chance Warmack is one of the great football players in college football, but how do you believe Barrett Jones, a two-time All-American, and you're saying the guy next to him might be the best player? Right. And here's the Allen Trophy winner who exactly. left tackle all of last year. Moves <laughs> to center because I guess Quanjo they thought was better at left tackle. It's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, good defense that time. Yes. Well, I think the goal was for Alabama to get your best five guys on the field, and that's the way they did it. There's a flag down. That was Will Ebner, number 32, on the tackle. This is Anthony Steen, number 61. Ebner has had an injury play career here at Missouri. Good player. Yeah, he was injured last week against Vandy. Had that hamstring problem, and they're better when he's in the football game. I thought the kind of veteran linebackers would give the Missouri defense a chance to pick up all those bootlegs and play action passes. If you're a young player playing against Alabama, it's kind of tough to sort out. Holding number 84 offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. They play second down. Brian Vogler, the backup tight end, number 84. Second down, 11 at the 15. They're perfect this year. Buffalo and Oklahoma State, the other two. You know, if you're going into a conversation in a football telecast, somehow Buffalo, Oklahoma State, Alabama. I never thought we'd use that trilogy. Yeldon! Did he yank it? Did he dive across? Yes, he, he did. did. Yes, he did. The only thing that could happen is his right foot might have hit the out of bounds before he got there. But obviously he hit the pylon. Great athletic ability. Let's see if his right or left foot hit the, the end line before he stretches out. Well, from there you can't tell. But look at that. Hmm. He went from the four-yard line and dove into the swimming pool, basically, right? Look at that. Four-and-a-half-yard line. Now, a different view straight at you. Don't see his feet, though, on that one. The ball, I think that's a good call. It got inside the pylon. Now we got to get the right foot and make sure there's some green to the outside of his shoe. Or left foot. But you, know, you can't tell, can you? No. Nope. Missouri defender kind yep. of blocked the view. So, in the absence of indisputable right. visual evidence. Wait, we got a guy with an iPhone that's got another <laughs> look at it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just got that app. Right. Jim Allison is our replay official today. Part of this SEC crew.
Left foot. After uh, further review, that's a touchdown. the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Pretty decent play. Yeah, pretty it? decent play. Remember, TJ was there in spring football for it was MVP, wasn't he? This as we got more lightning. We got lightning coming up top and on the field at the same time. They better not try and tell that's us that's it. I'll bet 10 that's miles it. to the north. <laughs> I think they're gonna send them in. Yeah, yeah. That was directly over the field. Here's Tom. The game Ritter. is being suspended due to lightning strikes. Did they play enough innings? Does this game count? Did they play enough holes? <laughs> well, in baseball, but in football, I think it counts no matter yeah. what. All right, so play suspended with 840 remaining in the first half of play. So the Tigers, there's... Burke Stresser and the Tigers heading to their hey, locker room. Guy that's got the hardest job right now is Nick. What's he going to yell about? That they didn't delay the game earlier <laughs> because he was pleading for it at a previous timeout. Now let's uh, refresh your mind from the rule book when play is suspended because of lightning. To resume athletic activities, lightning safety experts recommend waiting 30 minutes after both the last sound of thunder and the last flash of lightning. So that game, uh, according to my watch, at about 343, something like that. And uh, Steve Shaw in the SEC office, director of officials, said uh, that reasonable judgment will be used. I wonder if they have to clear the stands as well. I mean, these are all, you know, they're students out here. You can, I mean, they can't have them in harm's way, right? You'd think not. But I, I think that there would be an announcement of mandatory evacuation in that event. I think these guys are in for the long haul. Yep. And TJ Yeldon takes it to the outside. This time it's Anthony Steen coming around. Barrett Jones again getting a block. Jumps and launches off his left foot very smartly and the ball in his left hand to score the touchdown. If he goes down with his right foot, he's out of bounds. If he has the ball in his right hand, it's no touchdown. Well, that was a thing of beauty. It was. Mm. Coming up next, the SEC Gymnastics Championships. <laughs> you know who I first saw do that? I know there's been others, but Ricky Williams at Texas. Remember when Ricky used to do that when he played at Texas? Take that ball. I think... I know this sounds uh, ironic and, and since they've suspended play, but it seems to be getting a little lighter. Good. I'm an optimist. Well, that is a hopeful patch of blue overhead, but this may be nothing more than a slight break, according to the weather forecast. Nonetheless, we are ready uh, in a couple of minutes to resume play. A.J. McCarron going through his warm-ups. They were allotted a 10-minute warm-up period once they came back on the field. And, uh, Gary, it appears it's going to be roughly a 38-minute delay. And if I was Nick Saban and, and Gary Pinkle, but especially Nick, I mean, he's thinking, you know, i got a championship team here. I'm really on my players to make sure we get loose. Let's No shortcuts here. Forget the score. Let's not pull a hamstring or do something silly that will affect us in the next football game. Recall that when play was called, uh, T.J. Yeldon had just scored. The extra point had not been kicked. So that'll be the first uh, play once we resume play. Let's go down and check in once again with Tracy. Yeah, and Vern, after that score, the Missouri defense was extremely frustrated. They were given a break, though, and I had a chance to speak with defensive coordinator Dave Steckel as he just came out on the field. And I said, was it a good thing to have this break to allow your defense to regroup? And he just looked at me and he said, I hope so. Mm. Well, that's a pretty good perspective. All right. Well, sometimes you're outmanned, and they are outmanned here. You know, I didn't. I thought their defense would hold up, frankly, a little better than this, though. And uh, by agreement with the athletic directors and the two head coaches, uh, it has been agreed that halftime will be only five minutes, rather than the uh, normal 20. Uh, they did have this lengthy, lengthy break. 
And uh, so eight minutes and 40 seconds to go as we get back to play. Gary Pinkle. And Alabama, Missouri back on the field for the extra point try. Be Jeremy, Jeremy Shelley and uh, Tom Ritter says you ready to go yes we are wind the clock Shelley 28 to nothing well, play was suspended at uh, roughly 3.42 Central Time. And in the second quarter, uh, this was the band of storms that blew through here, more or less. Gary Pinkle looking on. This was the last play prior to the suspension. Yeldon leaning into the end zone. And the teams, after play was suspended, uh, there was a large lightning bolt directly above the stadium it appeared i know that all of us can see it yeah yep. we did and at 12 13 minutes ago missouri was back on alabama back on and uh let's uh, bring you up to date on the forecast <laughs> gary and i were commenting about this at six o'clock a hundred percent right but seven. by golly we got a window at seven o'clock five percent yeah window. thank you very much for that That's good measurements and, and then we go back up boy it's a finely tuned sense right <laughs> well you know the parents had to stay for the game here yeah. right they, yeah. they, you don't get to go home for a parent bands coming back on the field oh, from wow. missouri yep here's the kickoff marcus murphy oh, split him The chase is on. Marcus Murphy is going to win this one. Missouri's on the board. He's split him and then he's gone. I hesitate to say that was a cannon blast. That was not thunder. Three punt returns for touchdowns. And now he electrifies the 4,000 who are in the stands with a 98-yard return. <laughs> How about that? Andrew Baggett for the extra point. T.J. Moe is the holder. Nice snap. Good job by Moe. Yeah, because he dropped one in. Well, it was a bad snap and drop last week that cost him against Vandy. Marcus Murphy, once he made the leap, Right about the 25-yard line. Remember, before the rain delay, that was downwind. After the rain delay, now watch him skip right here. Right through those three tacklers, and he was gone. Marcus Murphy opened this year with two punt returns for touchdowns, 72 and 70. He had another punt return. That's Sheldon Richardson. This is Murphy, and it's 28-7. All right, Tim, thank you. 28-7, Alabama in five games had given up only 35 points, and uh, they yield a kickoff return for a touchdown here. 28-7. The last man to miss the tackle was the kickoff specialist, Cade Foster. And Murphy zoomed in from 98 yards out. Here's Christian Jones. Well, we'll see if uh, Missouri's defense now can just take and get a stop. Jones decides to bring it out. How about the two opportunities so far in the game? Remember the punt return Christian Jones had early in the game when Trey Barrow made the tackle? to save a possible touchdown right there. Well, Kate Foster had a shot against Murray. Number 43, he's got the last shot here. Watch 43 and 
stiff arm. So one guy makes the tackle, the other guy didn't. Because the punter and the kicker were the only two guys that had a shot. Alabama now leading by 21. McCarron. Lacey coming left. Out to the 22, and look at Sheldon Richardson from that defensive tackle spot, ranging wide to his right to make the stop. Okay, Cyrus Kwanja, we have not messaged his name except for that he moved in when Barrett Jones moved to center. He had a great block on that one along with Christian Jones on the edge. Second down three. Lacey breaks another tackle and another and finally is hauled down all the way out near the 47-yard line by Kentron Walker. You know, the beauty, Vern, in running the football, I mean, this time it's Steen with the crackback block, kind of a little bit of an inside trap on that play. Michael Williams, the tight end, also comes inside, gets a seal block outside. You got wide receivers, Amari Cooper fighting to get his man. I mean, the, the beauty in running the football, you know, back in the day, our, the, our day, Green Bay Packer, beauty mm -hmm. of running the football, that's what you got going right now. Here's Karen, play action, fires it short. Norwood, talk a little bit more about Lacey and what he's brought to this uh, game today. The second play from scrimmage, he went 73 yards for a touchdown. Eddie Lacey now nine carries, 140 yards, and two touchdowns. And we've still got 6.45 to go before halftime. And again, a reminder, because of the rain delay, the suspension of play, halftime limited to five minutes agreed upon by the athletic directors and the head coaches. Lacey goes right. Oh, look at that football. That? He fumbled the ball, though, didn't he? It and it comes is. out. Shane Ray recovers it, number 56. Now you'd have to say right now that that clap of lightning and thunder could not have come at a better time for Missouri. They needed to regroup and look at each other in the eye. Alabama goes in with a 28-0 lead, basically, and comes out and do not seem to find the game as fast as what they left the field. I don't think his knee was down on the play. It was close, but I thought the ball popped out first. He certainly thought so. Yeah, uh, uh, the... He made a great move to, to beat a defender at the hole, and I think the ball came out before his knee went down. Michael Sam forced it. And Corbin Beckstresser now finally, Beckstresser, excuse me, finally hit someone downfield, and they catch it. Wildcat, here's Kendall Lawrence. A little bit of a high snap, and Lawrence, how about this? Trey DePriest made the tackle, number 33. Well, this Alabama team came in plus 12 in turnovers. They had lost only three all year, and they've lost two in this ball game. A fumble by McCarron, and a fumble by Eddie Lacy. Second down. Lawrence remains in the Wildcat. Nope. Slipped on the eye of the Tiger. Did a period did slip, did yeah. slipped on that one for sure. Now, do you think already in this game with the 28-7, would Pinkle think about four down territory already as he makes this third down call? Subs on both teams now. And Berkstresser is back in at quarterback. Only three of ten in the ball game thus far. Movement up front. Yep, Justin Britt, number 68, I think. Yep. Five yard penalty remains. Third down. Right tackle, number 68. Watch him move. Alabama moving a little bit to the outside. Missouri always uses a silent snap. They do not have a snap count. Everything on their offense is silent snap. You saw the graphic on fumbles lost. That's the first Missouri penalty of the ball game. 
And it uh, results in the third down and 10. Brooks Fesser got it. But it's short of the first down. That's uh, Ladanian Washington. I thought he was going to get forward progress to the 40, but when he got free and started to run again, then they marked the ball properly at the 45-yard line. Now this is long. It's fourth and about six. And assume that Gary Pinkle will go with T. I thought he was going to get forward progress there, but as he regains his footing, they're going to call him in the proper spot at the 45. And so they do go with the punting unit. And Trey Ala Barrow is on. Alabama will play defense safe. They've got their normal defense in the field, on the field. And uh, Cyrus Jones, instead of Christian Jones, is back at the 10 yard line. Fair catch, call four, taken at the 15. Well, this seems appropriate to what we've seen here this afternoon at the 4 0 field. Wednesday on Survivor. Can the former baseball star keep his identity a secret? And will a dramatic illness claim another castaway? An all new Survivor Wednesday, 8 o'clock, 7 Central, only CBS. There you go. Uh, you know, the wisdom of wearing a nice suit and tie and then sitting on wet grass. It's the only way to get on TV. <laughs> T.J. Yeldon is the running back. He sees the corner cat coming to the outside. Let's see if Missouri can check out of it because A.J. knows it's coming. They do not check out of it. Yeldon trying to get around the corner, slip tackle. And then uh, a group of Tigers. Andrew Wilson led the way. Well, this is another appropriate introduction. Ah, ah, yes, indeed. The trivia question for the day when and against whom was Missouri's only win versus a number one ranked team? Well, Missouri fans will know that. 28-7, second down eight. Oh, batted down. Coney Ely, number 47, the defensive end. I think he got inside the block that time on a direct path. I think he gets inside Fluker here. Let's see if he does. Yes. Fluker steps outside. Ely comes inside. That was the mistake by DJ Fluker and allowed the pass to be broken up. Third down eight. Let's see if Sheldon Richardson can make a play inside. There's a spin move. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness, Amari Cooper getting his first start today. The true freshman wide receiver, 27 yards, came in as the leading receiver for the team with 17 catches in the first five games. Lined up at the X receiver, just runs about a 12-yard fade to the outside. Oh, that's not really flight. Kind of like a flag pattern to the outside and perfectly thrown, but no pressure on A.J. inside. Again, got to give half fit to the offensive line. Coming near side, Kevin Norwood with a catch across midfield. And uh, the stop made by Matt White, number 17. 2.45 to go before the break. A 38, roughly 38-minute 38 rain delay. Play suspended because of lightning strikes. And by agreement, we will be limited to a five-minute half dog. Vern, did you get a vote on that? Because that cuts you to one hot dog. You do all that. <laughs> oh, you're telling me. <laughs> you're telling me. Did uh, they check with you on this? I don't know if they can do this. No secrets in this booth. <laughs> Second down and three. Oh, he overthrew it. That could be a lateral. He called it incomplete. I assume it would be reviewable, but it's called on the field a, a incomplete pass. His the football was right on the line. It looks like it was slightly forward. Well, really tough to tell if you don't have a camera right on the line. And uh, they are not going to stop play. Well, I don't think. Nope. 
They are too. Or, or Nick Saban is, to tell you the truth. Hmm. It is an Alabama timeout. Third and three when we come back. We're back in Columbia, Missouri, where we have a 38-minute suspension of play because of lightning overhead. And a reminder that we'll have a five-minute halftime report. We'll go back to New York, Tim Brando, and the Geico halftime report. Uh, we're limiting Tim now. Well, one note through the rain delay, uh, Missouri has got E.J. Gaines back in their lineup, too. Their corner. Third down three. Let's... Through the hands of the intended receiver and incomplete, Matt White knocked it out of the hands of Kevin Norwood or Norwood just dropped it. I'm not sure quite which. Well, at least Matt White was in the vicinity. The ball a little slick as it was. It was yeah. good defense that time. Right on Kevin Norwood. In that situation, Matt White kind of played the sticks. He figured Alabama would be going for a short first down throw and he just jumped the route. Corey Mandel is on to punt. Marcus Murphy opened uh, the scoring, the only score so far for the Tigers, a 98 yard kickoff return. And he is back. He dropped it. Oh my goodness. Mandel nailed the drive inside the 35. Eric Waters. Was going to have to help Missouri get back in the game. You get a kickoff return, and now a perfect snap. And Cody, Cordell, Cody Mandel just drops it. Can't have it any perfect than that. We've seen some drop passes, but a drop punt like that is a 40 to 50 yard play. Uh, Mandel just dropped it. It was a perfect center from Carson Tinker. And a first down 10 now with an opportunity to get back on the board a second time. Before halftime. Again, James Franklin not playing. This is the red shirt freshman, Burke Spencer, and he keeps it heads left and doesn't get a lot. Well, first half possessions for Mizzou. Three plays, four plays, six plays, but uh, a lot of punts and an interception. Yeah, and four out of six, three and outs, too. You know, since the kickoff return, it has been, you know, bad football by Alabama. You get a fumble by Lacey, a fumbled snap on a punt. It has been, uh, you know, a, a bad start after the 30-minute delay. Second down, 11. Burks Dresser. Perfect. Down the middle. With Damian Washington, number two. This is exactly what Burke Stresser does well. Throws the ball downfield. It's been number two. LaDainian Washington over the middle of the field, and all of a sudden, a game that looked out of reach. Could be a football game at the abbreviated half. Bit of a low snap. Kendall Lawrence, number four. Not much, but C.J. Mosley there to ensure it wasn't... Missouri has all three timeouts, and they'll use one. Second down, eight. Missouri inside the 10, trading by 21. I'll have a look at Alabama's red zone defensive stats. 24 drives, 10 touchdowns. And that's over the last two years, first in the NCAA in two categories, number three in the other. Missouri expects Alabama to blitz in this situation. They prepared blitz all practice, and they do. Up the middle, Burke Stresser. Number 13, Burke Stresser. 30 seconds to go. See if Gary Pinkle, he's got two timeouts in his pocket. 23 seconds to go. I would think with a freshman quarterback, I'm not surprised. With a freshman quarterback, I think you got to regroup. Give him a fair third down call and not rush it. It will be third and seven at the eight when we come back. 
They're down seven, Missouri. Vern, uh, in practice, they anticipated that in this situation that T.J. Moe with a double move, kind of an out and kind of a stutter back into the middle of the field would work for them. Remember against South Carolina, they didn't go to him. Let's see if they can get Moe to the middle of the field with a double move or to the outside with almost a triple move. He's in the slot to the right, number 28. Right there. Blitz. Watch out. Fumble. Recovered by, oh, it's still loose. Mosley has it. He's up. And he tries to, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think it was Adrian Hubbard, number 42, that came off the edge. It was indeed. Right here, I believe. You can see nobody in the middle. You got to get rid of the ball fast. You know they're coming. It's on block to the outside. Corbin Bergstresser never anticipated the blitz. You called it, Vern. You have to be ready for everything. But as soon as the middle of the field was empty, he should have known it was coming. It's a lot easier up here, we all know that, but I saw him go over this 10 times in practice. Middle of the field empty, they're coming after us. And so the turnover from Missouri. A.J. McCarron has to throw it away. And that's a half. A reminder, it's going to be an abbreviated break because of the 38-minute suspension, a five-minute break. Teams will stay on the field. We'll go back to Tim Brando and the Geico Halftime Report right after this. Delayed halftime here in Columbia, Missouri because of a 38-minute, roughly 38-minute suspension because of lightning in the first half. So as we get set after this abbre abbreviated halftime break, it's 28-7 Alabama. Cade Foster will kick off. Murphy, who scored a touchdown on a 98-yard kickoff return, is the deep man. Well, they pooch it. Direction kick it. And so the... Uh, the rain appears to have subsided. We're back at play. The forecast, as we've been told, was 100% <laughs> for a resumption of the rain coming up around 6 o'clock. You know, Vern, it, it, it only it had to be human nature for Alabama to be in that locker room during that delay and go, and Nick's going, these guys can come. And he, all right, Coach, you know, save it. We got Tennessee next week. And, and then all of a sudden, a kickoff, a couple of uh, fumble, a muff punt, and all of a sudden, it gets to be where Missouri's got the ball and the ball starting the second half and it could be a football game. But the blitz has not been picked up yet by Missouri. This is Mo. Slot receiver going right on the handoff, and oh boy, did Trey DePriest go high to knock him down. Yeah, see, uh, TJ Mo has the quickness inside for the slot runs, but not the speed to get outside. Jesse Williams forces him around a little wider. Robert Lester comes up and makes the big tackle. He just does not have the speed to get outside this Alabama defense. Second down, 11. Across the middle and complete to Washington, number two. Another fine catch. Well, you can see why Corbin Bergstresser was recruited by Missouri. He has a gun when he has time to shoot it. And this crossing route to the middle, again, just a bit late by Clinton Dix. They're playing combo coverage on that square end, and Dix is getting there just a hair short of where that strong throw by Bergstresser got there. And Bergstresser has now hit his last three as the scar as guys begin to darken again. Deep right side. Got him open. Washington. Just think about the end of that half now. Even if it was a field goal, how different this would look. The bunch route, getting outside to the fade, man-to-man -man coverage, and a perfect catch and throw on the play. 
with Dion Blue on the corner. Birch Gesser comes back across the middle incomplete. Well, how about the halftime trends, Garrett? Well, of course, it was the running game to start out with that you have to talk about, you know, running for over 200 yards. Corbett Burkstresser had too many times that he was getting sacked under pressure the whole game. We had the long delay, and that really turned the game around because Mosley comes back and returns that kickoff. And then Alabama starts, Scott Marcus Murphy, excuse me, Alabama starts putting the ball in the field. And again, the Wildcat. Sonseri comes up number three for Alabama. Tried to time the blitz. High snap. Lawrence nailed. Nico Johnson, number 35, with the tackle. Yeah, nobody even got close to him that time. Run of the ball off tackle. Little linebackers reading it all the way. Nobody comes in. I can't get my telestrator a little sticky with this yep. moisture out here, Vern. Kind of got a weather problem up here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we've got most of the monitors well covered. Yeah, I know. And we are well covered. Third down conversions of 8 plus, 0 for 4. It's a third and 10 here. Big play for the Tigers. Five wide. The rain has started again. Three man rush. That's it. Three man rush. Burke Stresser. Marcus Lucas with the catch. And fourth down call here by Missouri. What do they do? Fourth down three. Now they're bringing on Andrew Barrett. The win is uh, at his back. And this will be from 41 yards. Andrew Barrett, 7 of 11 for the year. There have been only no field goals scored against Alabama this year. That's number one. Nah, number one. One of three by opponents. That was not Thunder. Many great traditions abound on game day throughout the league, and each week we'll give you a taste of the SEC presented by Sonic. Missouri's famous Golden Girls were founded in 1957 by band director Charles Emmons, who wanted to add some sparkle to the marching Mizzou. Originally consisting of a twirling line of six to eight majorettes and two twirlers, the group first danced in 1966 when the girls threw down their batons and dipped the Charleston. In 1970, the twirling line officially became the gold sequin high-kicking dance line that it is today. Dressed for the uh, dressed for the weather, they are. The band's back. Golden Girls are back. Not not many people. There are a few people in that north end zone. Yep. Well, well let, let's see if Alabama can turn it back on, because clearly so far they have not turned it back on. Almost a line drive kick taken by Cyrus Jones, and he is uh, tackled. McGriff Culver, backup running back, number 38. And uh, let's get the duck back on here before he gets rained out. The Athlete trivia question, when and against whom was Missouri's only win versus a number one ranked team? Don't have to go back far, do you? A little over two years ago, they defeated number one Oklahoma. Oklahoma that week came in as the top ranked BCS team as the rankings were unveiled the previous Sunday. Short pass across the middle. Caught by Lacey, number 42. Tackle made by Sheldon Richardson, number 34. Part of the game that uh, A.J. has been working on diligently is his faking of the football. Watch how hard he sells it. Gets it down, looks downfield, and then is patient to the drop-off. When you're throwing the ball on first down, you can earn more of those throws if you show the coach you're willing to drop it off and give them these second and shorts. Flag prior to the snap. See, if, like, if you're always going downfield on first down and you, you know, let's say you, you get, remain second down. 
let's say you're good at it and you hit six out of ten your coach goes I don't like it I on first down I want you to drop that ball off I want at least eight out of ten you only take the sh sure throws on first down second down six Kenny Bell to the right Cooper and Jones top of the screen Give to Lacey. Looks the blocks. Looks his way through. Now let's go to the studio for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Here's Tim Brando. Vern Gary Colin Klein is the Rodney Dangerfield quarterback for the uh, underrated K-State Wildcats. Today, 105 yards, three touchdowns. They held up Iowa State tonight. Matt Barkley and his Trojans will be on display against Washington. E.J. Manuel and Florida State have a date with Boston College in Tallahassee. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. And you know, you hear quietly the mention of A.J. McCarron in oh, yeah. Matt Heisman. That was, that was my pick this yeah. year. And again, he, without an interception in this ball game, he's 11 of 16. Oh, and he takes a sack. He does have a fumble as well today. And look who is there. Sheldon Ripson, did oh, he get stung on this play? He spun just as he got hit. Remember when they put the two linebackers in the middle and bailed at it before? This time, same look, and this time, all-out blitz. A.J. spins just at the time that Richardson makes the tackle. Michael Sam was the second man there. Could have been Michael Sam's knee to the back. It could have been an ankle. Or Tracy might tell us it's dirt in the eye. He had to be there last, last week for that one, I guess, right? Yes. Well, McCarron being lifted. Yeah, it's, it's his ankle. Yes. Oh, boy. Blake Sims is the backup quarterback. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Scott Trade. Ford. Chick-fil-A. And by New York Life Insurance Company. It is fourth down here in rain-drenched for Old Field. A.J. McCarron apparently, apparently with an ankle injury. Yep, as he spun his right ankle got caught by Sheldon Richardson. Fourth down and 12. Mandel is back. Recall that he had a snap go through his hands earlier in the ball game. Carson it's Tinker is the center. It's raining as hard as it has at any time in the game right now. Murphy, who has three punt returns for touchdowns this year, is back. Picks it up on two hops. Right side, Mosley knocks him out of bounds. Right now, Gary Pinkle bought three points last drive in great field position getting the ball back. A.J. McCarron, ankle injury. Richardson was the first one through, and when he spun out, that's when the injury appeared to have occurred. Time call. This is A.J. McCarron, and obviously not an ankle, but a knee injury, Gary, that uh, yeah, occurred got, when he was sacked. Got a hit on that lower right leg just as he was spinning. Sheldon Richardson hit him just as he was turning. Watch his right leg. Richardson catches it just as he's trying to spin out of it. It's the first time really all game there's been a real breakdown in the offensive line and pass protection. And let's go down to Tracy. Well, guys, it's his right knee that they're looking at. And right now they're blowing some cool air on his knee to try and see how much movement he can have. No word on whether he'll return yet. And I'll get that to you as soon as I can, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. Again, the backup is Blake Sims. He has played in three games this year in uh, mop-up duty. He's three for three for the year. We'll, we'll see when Alabama gets the ball back if uh, he is on the field as the quarterback. In the meantime, here's Burke Stresser. Under pressure from Williams. Goes deep, throws it away. Jesse Williams broke loose and uh, was a huge force on that play. 
Well, and, and David Yost, the offensive coordinator, dialed that crossing route behind the linebackers again, and he was coming open again. David Yost is with the long blonde hair and sunglasses. You don't often say that. No, you don't. Right? He doesn't have the sunglasses on right now, but he usually does <laughs> when you talk to coaches. Been a long time uh, colleague of Gary Pinkle, was with him at Toledo, and has been here for all 12 of the Pinkle years at Mizzou. Sunseri. That is an incomplete pass. Burke Stresser and Sinceri was there about the time the attempt to throw the pass was right. made. In this game, I think that Missouri's only brought, picked up the blitz one time really in the whole game. That time, Burke Stresser had two guys coming from the field, overloaded again. He's got to see it. He has to help his offensive linemen and backs and throw that ball away quicker. There is a illegal flag. formation on the offense. Number 72 was not on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is declined. Third down. And, and Vern, um, just for our listeners, Missouri's backup quarterback, because James Franklin is out, is Matty Mock, a true freshman whom they're trying to redshirt. They remember they got to buy next week. Right. And they think Franklin will be back the week after, so they don't want to play Mock in this football game. Third down 10. There's Matty Mock. Out of Kenton, Ohio, gaudy figures as a high school quarterback. They dearly would like to redshirt him. But Gary Pinkle telling us if they have a chance to win the game and Burke Stresser goes out, they would waste the redshirt. Burke Stresser, that one took off on him. Just uh, in case, take a look at these high school numbers from Matty Mock. 18,932 yards. 219 touchdowns. Yeah, those are good. You know, you get scholarships with those numbers. <laughs> yes. It's fourth down and ten. It's, by the way, a rule I'd like to see changed. I think they should limit a a red shirt to a number of plays, like 50 plays in the whole year. If you need a guy for an injury like this, why can't he play? Ooh. Farrell. Cyrus Jones. Fair catch. Gold and taken just inside the 10 yard line. That's a 34 yard punt. And they are still working on AJ Looks McCarron. Looks like they put a brace on him. Yes, they did. Find out if he's able to play when we come back. And during the time we were away, a gimpy AJ McCarron with a brace on his knee back into the huddle and joined there by his head coach. Nick looks like he says, you okay? You going? And AJ says, I want to try it. Now, this is where you lean on that offensive line. Yep. Right? You've got four or five front line players plus a tight end. You say, help our team out. Let's get it off the line. Let's put this game away and get home. Two fumbles lost by Alabama in this game. One from McCarron, one from Lacey. The running back right now is Yeldon, and he comes right. Picks up just a couple. Yeah, Sheldon Richardson has looked one more time at Richardson getting inside D.J. Fluker again on the play to make it, and then on first down, Richardson makes the stop again. Gain of two, second down and eight. That was a shot of that cool air being blown on that right knee as he was uh, over on the Alabama sideline. It's Yeldon again at Cyrus Jones, number eight, starting in motion. Yeldon breaks it into the secondary, holds on tightly, and picks up an Alabama first down. David Steckel brings the corner. It's a run blitz by bringing the eighth man in the box. It's the corner blitz by E.J. Gaines. And the Alabama offensive line finds a crease on the other side of the field. There's Dave. Like David Yost, Dave Steckel has been with Gary Pinkle throughout his tenure here at Missouri. Yeldon on the toss sweep. It's those fall forward yards. Mm -hmm. You know, well defended, 
by Missouri. But Yeldon just gets those extra two yards, and instead of it being, you know, second and nine, it's second and six and a half, second and seven. Play action. McCarran. Well, he looked pretty nimble didn't he yeah, not quite what he was no. but good enough to make it third and short Little play action pass nice rush by Michael Sam again getting inside it's the offensive tackles for Alabama the times they've been beaten it's been inside with a stunt from either Michael Sam or Sheldon Richardson third down three Alabama yet to convert from this distance today. Cyrus Jones in motion. Little toss. Right side to no, Kenny Bell. Didn't get it. Did not. It's a great ball handling by A.J. McCarron. He saw the blitz coming, got rid of the ball very quickly, but defended very well. Coney Ely, number 47, from the right side of the screen, is going to pressure him. Watch him get rid of the ball quickly, throws it backing up. But playing a zone defense from behind kept short of the first down. Randy Ponder and E.J. Gaines combined for the tackle. Now on fourth down and one, Cody Mandel and Marcus Murphy, who has a kick return, kick off return for a touchdown in this game is deep. That was a little bit of a low snap. And a good punt. Yes, oh my gracious. Murphy gets by the first defender. Not the second. He's out to the 21-yard line. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Kim Brando. Fellas, I believe the narrative is going to change about West Virginia this week. Seth Dagey is just having a field day off the play action fake. 29 yards. This is to Moore. It's his fifth touchdown pass of the day. Texas Tech is doing it. It's now 42 to 7 over West Virginia. Tuberville strikes again in his career. If he wins six out of eight times when he's played top five teams, he's won. Back to you. Timmy, you sound like a guy who knows Tommy Tuberville. Tuberville. How about that West Virginia defense? They're right in, right in. I, I didn't. I, I didn't I mean to catch at the you. Play right, there. <laughs> right in form is what I was going to say. Oh my goodness. 28-10, 5:34 to go here on a nasty Saturday afternoon. If you uh, just joined us, 38-minute rain delay. Well, actually, a lightning suspension in the first half that resulted in a five-minute halftime. Alabama was up 28 to nothing when play was resumed. And then Missouri got a kickoff return and a field goal. This is Randy Hansworth. Two freshmen out of Arlington, Texas. Remember when we did Missouri and South Carolina two weeks ago, there were 21 Texans on the depth chart. That's a, been a great area for recruiting for Mizzou for many, many years. Hansborough again goes right. Missouri did not really has not really tried what they call their super kind of pace offense when they quick snap it this time Alabama was not ready however nobody blocked anybody and when you got Mosley standing right there unblocked those quick plays end quickly and it's second and long kind of a feast or famine with that fast offense if it's not working you're just giving the ball back to the other side quick Oh, bad snap. Low snap, yes. Berkstrasser goes deep right for Jimmy Hunt, number 88. Berkstrasser had to go down near his ankles to grab the, the low snap. Yeah, it didn't have anything on it, did it? The ball. Now the ball was probably wet because it hit the grass that time, and it was a knuckleball. Ha uh -huh, Clinton Dix was on the play, but this thing had to be going all different directions. Third and long. So are they going to bring more than four? Because they're lining up four. Sanceri on the corner. 
He drops back this time. Burke stresses. Brings it out right side. Oh, Lawrence. I got it. Yes, indeed. Kendall Lawrence, number four. Kendall Lawrence did a good job of taking it, making one guy miss is what you're going to have to do because they're throwing a play and just kind of getting someone out in front of the play. That time it was Eric Waters, the tight end, makes one key block, and they get a first down. Hand off left side, Lawrence. As he slips through the line of scrimmage, Ed Stinson from behind. It is interesting because of the sacks. I mean, they've been sacked three times for 53 yards. Missouri has still not got into positive rushing yards as a team for the game unless they did with that play. I don't think they had, they're still at minus two. Right. Here comes Sunsari. The play goes away from him, the option. Hansborough trying to protect it is all down. Is it going to be horse crawler or not? Nope. Jeffrey Pagan, number eight. Pagan is one of those young studs. It's the second wave of defensive ends. Option one way, Pagan stays home as the right defensive end comes right back to him, and he accelerates. Gets the jersey, but did he get the collar? No, he didn't. His left hand had the jersey. It was not the collar. That was a perfect call. And the loss results in a third and 16. Missouri 2 of 11 on third down conversions. Burke Stresser now 9 of 21. Three-man rush. Safety valve pass out to the right. Yeah, the option play killed them. That was the one play that, you know, they had the chains moving. Bergstresser went round wide. Alabama strung it out with their great speed. When the cutback came the other way, that really became too tough for them to pick up the first down, third and long. It's uh, the injured player. Is it Milner? Stinson, and this is D. Milner. Yeah, Who's, Milner. Uh, getting both a little help. Both yes. of them. Time called with play stop with three minutes to go. And fourth down, 11. Cyrus Jones, number eight. This number eight. Is back to return the punt. There. Ooh, appeared to bobble it. And a spin. And then a late flag, too. Four to three yard punt, 12 yard return. Jones goes one way, spins back the other way, ducks under his own player, and then in a block in the back is what's going to bring it back. I don't know if it was TJ Yeldon, it was the number four. Sometimes there's two number fours on the field, or three. <laughs> I think it was yelled at. Yes. See in the Third middle. Return, right. Illegal block there. in the back, number four. Yeah, it was. Receiving team, half the distance for the goal, first down. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. And Thursday, in the city that never sleeps, Sherlock Holmes never stops. See why critics are calling elementary the season's best. Don't miss a new episode Thursday, only CBS. And uh, for more on A.J. McCarron's injury, let's go down to Tracy. Yes, guys, they have ruled it a bruised right knee. He spent the whole last drive on the bike, just keeping it stretched out. He did have a bunch of smiles, though, and they do expect him to play through it, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. 28-10 with 2.40 to go in the third quarter. Yeldon. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Man. Sloppy tackling. Tell you, just look up to these five guys up front again. Need to help the quarterback. 
Run the ball to Steen's side, Fluker's side, and that time a good block by Kelly Johnson, number 31, to the H-back fullback, and boy, watch him bounce off Yeldon. One cut back, and then a bounce off. Hey, they run aggressively, don't they? Two, Two backs. backs over 100, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeldon again. Well, Alabama was up 28-0. And then they had the lightning delay. It's been 10 nothing since. But it still just appears, the feel of the game to me is, if Alabama doesn't turn the ball over, Missouri's not going to drive it. Right. That's just what it feels like to me. Now Eddie Lacy is on. A long time ago in the second play of the game, he went 73 yards for a touchdown. Lacy has 147 so far and has had limited action in this half. Not much there. Florida's underway at Vandy. Let's go back to Tim Brando. All right, Vern, those Commodores who beat uh, Missouri last week get off the schneid early. Jordan Rogers to Jordan Matthews. It's seven to nothing Vanderbilt. But as only you'd say, Vern, it's early. Back to you. <laughs> All right, Timmy. Here are the up-to-date standings. Carolina, of course, plays tonight down at uh, LSU. Florida underway. Georgia, Vandy, Tennessee, Missouri, and Kentucky in the SEC East. Third down, six. They come at him again. Same blitz that hurt him. McCarron sidearms at right side, short of the first down. Cyrus Jones with the catch. I think it was Will Ebner that stuck with him that time, too, the middle linebacker. Avoids the blitz inside, picked up well. Lacey gets it, and then Will Ebner sticks with the receiver crossing and gets Cyrus Jones before he can get the first down. Nice job by Ebner. Well, they did move the ball now from their own nine out uh, just short of the 45. And on fourth down, Mandel is back. He'll take the snap from Carson Tinker. And Marcus Murphy, ever dangerous, is back at the 15-yard line for Missouri. and taken at the 16-yard line. We've reached the end of three with our score, Alabama 28, Missouri 10. We'll return to Memorial Stadium right after this word from your local station. fourth quarter at Columbia, Missouri. A few of the faithful have stuck around. We had a 38-minute rain delay. We begin the start of the fourth quarter with rain still coming down. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson from 4 Field in Columbia. First ever visit by Alabama here as a co-member of the SEC with Missouri. First down, and uh, they'll go from the Wildcat. Here's Kendall Lawrence coming to the right and uh, making a decent run as we get underway with the start of the fourth. Well, I'm just, I'm still stunned at the difference in this Alabama team after that uh, lightning suspension. Yeah, like I say, I no. mean, he is, well, Nick would have to do a real sell job to get these guys fired up. I mean, it's just, I just say, you look at the score and you go, coach, I just don't believe you. I don't think they're gonna come back. And yes, you know, you always want to have great stats and, you know, the turnovers help. But right now, Alabama's looking at the clock and go, let's get out of here without anybody else getting hurt. And if they can, you know, put moderate pressure on the quarterback, the football game's over. The only chance Missouri has is to protect Burke Stresser enough that they can start hitting those crossing routes. Third down, seven. They have to say you had to be proud if you are a Missouri fan, though. I mean, you know, they continue to fight throughout the game. The offensive line way undermanned, doing a decent job. Oh, 
12 men in the huddle. Tom Ritter. Substitution infraction yeah. on the offense. They had 12 players in the formation for more than three seconds. Five yard penalty remains third down. You know, it is very interesting right there. Gary Pinkle said nobody came in. One guy leaves. See, somebody leaves. Okay, I don't see 12 guys in the huddle for that long. So the guy that left is the one that was called mm -hmm. as being in that huddle too long. So that was why the call was made. Interesting idea by Nick Saban. He believes there should be a, an official on the field that looks at nothing but substitutions. Oh, dribble the snap back. Here's Burke's dresser. And that'll be fourth down. Poor center. Again, the regular center, Mitch Morris, is one of the injured players on the offensive line. And a redshirt freshman named Brad McNulty has started and gone the distance and has had a couple of problems. Yep. And that one, remember, he's got a guy right on his nose that is a load. You're trying to get the block and snap the ball at the same time. The ball's wet when you snap it, wet when you catch it, wet when it hits the grass. You got to keep it real clean in this type of weather. Trey Barrow on to punt. Cyrus Jones is back. That's the second rugby kick. The other one was blocked. This one was shanked. Kind of that running kick to the outside. Mm -hmm. A 27 yard punt. Never good when you mention a block, a shank, and a punter. <laughs> and now it's time for our Geico game recap. Second play from scrimmage. Eddie Lacy goes right, gets a couple of really terrific blocks, and then moves back to the inside. Little hip wiggle. Heads for the corner, 73-yard touchdown. Alabama up 7-0. Try to flea flicker and then give it off to Lacey. He goes up and over the top. It's 14-0 Alabama. T.J. Yeldon came on to make it 21 to nothing. And uh, just before we got the suspension because of a lightning strike, this was Yeldon going out to the right side. Beautiful diving touchdown. The lightning came. The game was suspended for 38 minutes with 8.40 remaining in the first half. And when play resumed after the extra point, it was Murphy, 98 yards. The last man with the chance to get him was the kicker, Cade Foster. He misfired. 98 yards, and Missouri was on the board 28-7. Andrew Baggett had a 41-yard field goal, and that is where we stand. Vernon, if I was in Missouri, I'd be awake for a deep ball. And remember the last time in this situation they went flea flicker. They haven't gone deep since. Maybe some kind of play action pass and see if they can find a deep one and put this game away and maybe get their quarterback out of there. McCarron playing with a bruised knee. Amari Cooper, oh, there was a, I think it was a slip actually by uh, Kip Edwards, number one. And that allowed Cooper to pick up a couple of more yards. Cooper's second catch. This one's coming back, though. They're holding on the play, I believe. Yeah, coming out on the play right there. I think it was Quanjo that might have got called on it. Number 71 yep. offense, 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Cyrus Quanjo was the tackle to that side. He was the one that had the block, that corner in the flat on the quick screen. Kind of extended and grabbed him at the same side uh, play. Watch number 71, the left side of the offensive line, right side of the screen, comes out. He's running, he's running, and just throws his left hand out there that time on Kip Edwards and grabs him. So that results in a first down and 19. Lacey again. Oh, he just about broke the tackle of Matt White. Yeah, Matt White was holding on for dear life because if he didn't squeeze tightly, that was a touchdown. Again, this play looks crowded to the left side, but you trust, you follow Womack and Jones. That would be trustful, wouldn't it? Oh, boy. Follow 65 and 75. I would trust those two blocks. 
Second down nine. Let's go back to Lacey again. Look at him work. Time now for Red Lobster to present today's scholar athletes. We're going to go to Missouri, where Matt Hoke has posted a 3.97 in middle school education. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Missouri's General Scholarship Fund. There's Hoke. Remember last time in this situation, Missouri blitz with the two linebackers inside. Let's see if they use the same look. Two linebackers over the center. Yes, it is. There it is, right there. Will they blitz it, or will they sugar out of it? They're out of it. McCarron. Quickly to Cooper on the left side. That's very close. It sure is. Well, one time when you got those two guys stressing inside, blitz. The next time, you bail out of it. You force that offensive line to protect. They squeeze down. This time, you come out of it. And Sheldon Richardson again from his defensive tackle spot shows why every coach I've talked to says he's a player. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. Or at least line up for it. Right. Lacey is the fullback. They'll go from under center with McCarron. It'll be Lacey, right side. Breaks it. Uh, I'll tell you, Missouri was misaligned, Vern. I mean, I really couldn't even get it out fast enough. Uh, Alabama's overloaded on the right side, and Missouri only has one player to that side of the line. Look at this, only one guy over here. Look at that, there's four guys for Alabama to block one guy. That was a gimme. And with that carry, Eddie Lacy has set a career high, 164 yards. Previous high was against North Texas of 161. Lacy, 164, two touchdowns. They'll give it to him again. And why not? Will Ebner, number 32. Eric Jones is limping now a little bit out in the field, too. You know, I mean, these things are all just bumps and bruises. But uh, we saw Barrett, remember, a couple years ago, bad memory for Alabama fans. See if he gets stepped on or something here. Can't really see anything, but he comes. Remember, a bad memory for Alabama fans when he got hurt in that Auburn game. He was going to match up. And Nick Fairley never got the chance to do it. Working on his master's degree, one of uh, more than a handful of graduates on the Alabama football team. Here's Lacey. Stopped by Ebner behind the line of scrimmage. That's a loss of one. And they continue to grind the clock down. Lacey, 176, averaging 11.1. And again, the big play out of Eddie Lacey today was that 73-yard run on the second play from scrimmage. T.J. Yeldon, who's also over 100 yards, he's got 127. That's his career high. Now, he's only in his true freshman season. Here's Yeldon again. Had that 101-yard effort in the opener against Michigan and uh, 181 until today in the subsequent four games but he's now carried for 131 yards probably puts him over 300 yards rushing it does yes and contrast that with Missouri's now I see why you said what yeah. you said at the beginning of the fourth quarter. <laughs> well, 53 yards in sacks but let's just put that out of there that still means they only ran for 53 yards or 60 yards or whatever. Yeldon is split wide to the right side. Stunt across the middle. That's Amari Cooper. Nice throw. He got that ball and had to deliver it very quickly that time. Remember, dealing with the red ball, shotgun snap, catches on his left hand, adjusts it, throws it just inside that time. And makes the perfect throw. Michael Sam had an angle for the ball, but a perfect throw. And Alabama now in a position to put this game out of reach, if it isn't already. And McCarron with 21 passes today without an interception. And his streak is in its ninth game. He's now thrown 217 passes with no picks. 
Yeldon. And look who's leading the way. Big Jesse Williams. Short of the goal line. The Fluker and Mormack seem to think he's scored. Same play they scored on earlier. And, and you know, TJ Yeldon kind of gave up on that play. That's the one time he might have followed number 54 and had a little better play on it. But it's never a bad thing near the goal line to go inside and hammer. Lacey back in. Let's go to the right side. Did he reach it out? Yes, yes, he, yes did. he did. Yes, he did. He gets stopped pretty well by the Missouri defense this time, but he reaches the ball out. Right there to break the play. Now. And so Jeremy Shelley on for the extra point. 8.05 to go in the ball game. Lacey with 177 on the ground today. McCarron the holder. Eddie Lacey began the afternoon with a 73 yard run. He's added 103 yards since then. And he scored three touchdowns. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Red Lobster. Russell Athletic. Aflac. And by Bud Light. Well, we are back in rain-drenched Columbia, Missouri, and A.J. McCarron. Moments ago, take a look at this. Uh, he was the holder, Gary, on the Shelley PAT truck. Yeah, I can actually relate to this one. This is like an old 13-year vet, like George Blanda getting, that's Kenny Stabler getting up from the Raiders. That's Gary for Danielson <laughs> in <laughs> no, Detroit. No, that's Kenny Stabler getting up, holding for George Blanda. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like when you're in the NFL for about 10, 15 years. And that looks like a scene out of North Dallas 40, didn't it? And it's now time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, when you've got one of these guys to give the ball to, it used to be Ingram, then it was Trent Richardson, and now it's Eddie Lacy. I mean, sometimes he's sprinting out, out there. Other times, he's just hammering away. And then the next time you look for the tool, and he's a mallet. And then he's an axe. And then when you need him, he can be a club. And you just reach in the toolbox, and whenever you need something hard, you just grab it and you hit it with that. And that's Eddie Lacy. I wish he'd scored one more time. <laughs> I didn't have anything. See that's, you all were going. that's all I got. That's all First down and 10. 8.05 to go in the ball game after that big touchdown from Alabama. Sweep to the right, it's a hand throw. It's Dinson number 49 made the tackle. Vern, you don't call the nose tackle a lot in football because he's taking up blockers. But if you watch the tape after the game, this is what Jesse Williams does the whole game. He takes on people and he does not get knocked down. So that allows everybody else to make tackles. But I watch so much tape on this guy, there's not a lot better anywhere, but he just does not go off his feet. Four down now for Alabama. Play fake. And the catch is made out of the left side by Marcus Lucas, number 85. Well, watch that first down play from the one before. Jesse oh, Williams grew up in Brisbane, Australia. And how did he wind up in Tuscaloosa? Well, first, junior college at Arizona Western in Yuma. And then you go to Tuscaloosa. And you're in your second year, as we mentioned, one of the four Australian non-punters 
Here yeah. comes the field blitz again. Okay. Sanceri. Lester and Sanceri, here yeah. they come. Another look at Williams. Ball tipped. Bergstresser now 11 of 26. Second start of the season, as we said. The redshirt freshman out of Lee's Summit, Missouri, who uh, signed on with Missouri in his junior year. That was incomplete. Just want to show you what you watch tape of when you watch Jesse William. Here's the first down play of this drive. Watch him inside, take on people, penetrate. That's him with the tattoos. And look at that. Take, fight, 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 get to the outside, and make the play. And that's uh, like 60 minutes of stuff from. That was actually the pass play on the last one right there. Third down, 10. Three down for Alabama. They'll bring four. First dresser. Oh, Intercepted on the tip. Picked off by Ha Ha Clinton Dix. <laughs> That makes me laugh every time. It does, me too. His grandmother nicknamed him that. His real name is, his full name is Hashan Clinton Dix. It was good coverage before then. Let's give part of the interception to the man-to-man -man coverage to the outside. Not sure if it was Blue or Milner to the outside. Milner. It was Milner on the play. Again, the ball skills when the ball's at its apex goes up. And Nix makes the interception, but Milner is the guy that tipped the ball. Moments ago, this was uh, Eddie Lacy being accompanied into the tunnel and over to the Alabama locker room. No word yet on the uh, injury. Tracy's working on it. And uh, A.J. McCarron through for the day. Blake Sims is the backup quarterback, number six. Fourth game in which he's participated this year. All in mop-up duty. I expect we'll see a lot of this for the next six and a half minutes or however long Alabama keeps control of the football. Gary mentioned they're uh, on the road at Tennessee next week. Right. That could be a very interesting ball game. Tennessee's at Mississippi State tonight. Well, Kadaro uh, Patterson was one receiver. Justin Hunter, the other receiver. And a quarterback, Tyler Bray. They also got Rivera, tight end. I think it'll be the first time this year that Alabama's going to face a quarterback that's not afraid to throw the ball against them. And by the way, their offensive line has protected Bray well. But these guys will be a handful. Yeah. Because they've got about 20 defensive packages they run, and they will be in full force. Here's Blake Sims. Yeldon comes to the left. And for more on Eddie Lacy, let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, it's a hand injury for Lacy. He was taken into the locker room, as you mentioned, for further evaluation. They do not expect to see him back, and that's mainly because of the score situation. So that's the update. If we get anything more, I'll pass it along, guys. Now, I know, Trace, that you were checking the weather forecast very thoroughly yesterday and last night at dinner. Have you remained dry? No, not at all. I've changed my jacket three times, and I look forward to taking off my shoes and socks, which are completely soaked through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you drive in Craig's car if that's the case, then, okay? With <laughs> oh, my goodness. Flag is down. Offense, 12 players in the huddle for more than three seconds. Five-yard penalty, first down. Actually, Nick was kind of emptying the bench, putting the substitutes in and getting the backups in, and... Kind of having his first string guys take a well-deserved bow, but one of the guys didn't come out fast enough. So six penalties for Alabama, and it draws the ire of Nick Saban. Now, brand new offensive line is in there. And this is uh, Kenyon Drake, number 17. A while ago, we mentioned uh, the great depth of this Alabama team, and here's a a backfield that has lost two for the season. D. Hart injured in the last game, and Jalston Fowler 
injured two games ago, both out for the year. And now they're featuring Ken Kenyon Drake, and he's played quite well in the in right. games of the last couple of games. The reason Nick was uh, upset there is because he knows now that he, if to get a first down, he's going to have to throw it. Now, will he? Probably not. Quarterback draw. Sims. Wow. And Ronte Walker pushed him in the back and got him out of bounds. Remember a few years ago, it was the Wildcat by Mark Ingram that actually won them a football game. This is basically the Wildcat with Blake Sims. That's what they'll do. If they need a changeup in a football game, that will be the changeup. Bringing Sims in the game with McCarron and run the little Wildcat. And so a 36-yard run by Sims. Center now is Ryan Kelly, number 70. Hand off Kenyon Drake coming left. Spin move, beauty. Dives for the end zone, did not make it. Ruled out of bounds, just short. We saw Drake against, uh, who did we see them against? Arkansas, he scored a late touchdown. He's very elusive and good spin. Takes the hit continues to turn in all the years that you and I have been doing this I've never gone deeper on the depth chart or the numerical roster that we did for Alabama in that Arkansas yeah that's true that's like when you found uh, Lutz and Kirchin on that pitch at one time remember that <laughs> yes I do first and goal Kenyon Drake it'll be second and goal Michael Sams with the tackle 310 remaining in this well, Missouri, let's talk about them. Gary Pinko a little bit. Remember, they get the bye week. Try to get healthy, get some offensive linemen back. Last year, they won their last four games. So if they finish strong again, you know, they've got opportunity. The key game for them will be they have to play at Florida. Now, Philip Ely is in at quarterback. Number 12, he replaces Blake Sims. And it's second down and goal. Gets a block, bounces to the outside, and goes in untouched. Harrison Jones provided the block. This is just off tackle play 101 from the goal line. Harrison Jones, as Vern told you, got the key block, and Drake bounces outside for a walk-in. Big play, though, Blake Sims, that yes. long uh, quarterback draw keeper. That's the 36 yards. Shelley, see who the holder is. McCarron's on the bench. It's Sunseri. And uh, nice hand from Nick Saban. And you get that when you go with your second team and run another one in the end zone. to be young and rainproof. They're sticking with it. Time now for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Let's go back to the opening series of the game and our good friend Eli Gold of the Alabama Radio Network. And here's the handoff. Big hole near side. Open for Eddie Lacy. He's going to go down the near sideline. He's to the 40. Cuts inside of the defender at the 30. Goes across the field. He's to the 20. To the 15. To the 10. To the 5. How about that? seconds worth of play and Alabama's on top on a 72 yard run. Eli's seen a few pretty good uh, performances by the Crimson Tide. They got it rolling. Again next week is a, a is a game that will be fun to watch. Here's Kate Foster's kickoff and that'll go through the end zone and come back out to the 25 yard line. No return by well, remember back in the first half, somewhere in the first half, we asked the CBS poll, Facebook poll, your favorite mascot in the Close. SEC. How about that? Whoa, my Close. goodness. Truman, you finished third for crying out loud, but you're staying with it. Mike the Tiger down at LSU second, and of course Truman after 
President Harry S. Truman from nearby Independence, Missouri. Oh, look at this. <laughs> See you in basketball. Yeah. <laughs> I like Mizzou's chances. Right. Might be a penalty oh, right there. Wow. More than might. Oh my heavens. Michael Fanning, well, Michael Fanning is gonna get flagged for this play. Yeah, and you know, opportunity to play. Oh man. Personal foul. Very dangerous. Absolutely. Uh, that that I yard bet penalty for that time. will be a that could be a suspension. I think so, and I yes. think it's it should be a suspension. Yeah, I mean, yes, an opportunity to play by a young player, but that will be looked at by the commissioner. And remember, the commissioner makes those final decisions. A very, very dangerous play. Oh, my gracious. Thank God that nothing bad oh. LaMichael Fanning, number 44. And a hand raise, obviously just fine because he's got the ball and going left. Stay tuned for the Jeep postgame show on CBS Sports. I don't know, Gary. Timmy Brando's getting more action than you and I are this game. Second down and eight. Oh, what a dangerous play that was. Wow. Well. Forty-two ten under two to go. Hansborough. Just occurs to me, you know, whose name we've not mentioned once today. Supposedly the number one recruit in all of high school football last year, Doriel Green Beckham. I don't think he's been on the field. Nope. He was suspended last week and didn't, hasn't earned his way back on the field. And no one's even rushed as a team for 100 yards this season against this Alabama team. Third and three. Saban on the sidelines. Fewest rush yards allowed under Saban. Michigan State minus 48. Kent State minus 9. And Clemson in 0-8-0. One of the reasons that Nick gets those type of, obviously, good football team and everything, but he plays a slower-paced game. Give you an example. The average number of plays against Alabama this year has been 58. So far, Missouri has run 56 in this football game. Alabama only runs 63 plays a game. Take a guess at Oregon. Mm. How many they are? 80, 80 something? 80 plays a game. 80, wow. So that's about a third less plays than what's happening over there, and 25% and to a third less plays, and that's a slow down style that Nick plays and gets his team to play at this pace, and it's worked and worked well for him. Injured players, Waters for Missouri. Take a look at the, the very end of it. Waters with the catch, the takedown. Yeah, it looked innocent, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Kind of fell perhaps on his tailbone. I mean, it was, there was nothing bad on that play. Good tackle, kind of threw the receiver out of bounds. as we give you a wider view of the SEC and entering into the really strenuous part of the season. South Carolina at LSU tonight. South Carolina on October 20th is at Florida. LSU at A&M or Alabama at Tennessee. And then on the final weekend, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, South Carolina, Mississippi State at Alabama. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about Alabama's schedule this year is last year 
out of the three big teams in the East, and it wasn't very strong last year, but they only faced Florida, did not play Georgia and South Carolina. This year, Florida does not play, excuse me, Georgia, Alabama does not play Florida, Georgia, or South Carolina until the SEC championship, if they get there. Yes. Well, they continue to work on Eric Waters. Fourth down at three. Hard to tell it did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's still face down. We always love to get these games over with when this part of the game did his neck extend back. I don't know. Boy. Mm. Now we'll step aside. The injured player, Eric Waters. Huh? <clears throat> Tonight on CBS begins with NCIS Los Angeles and Hawaii 5 followed by a new edition of 48 Hours Tonight, only CBS. They continue to work on the injured Missouri Tiger. Stretcher is coming out. Ugh. Ugh. Just shows you how fast. Looked yeah. so innocent, didn't it? And then just yep, four just or five plays prior to that. Yes, looked like the most dangerous thing you'd ever seen. Right? Absolutely. When LaMichael Fanning took on Randy Hansborough. It was definitely his back of his head hit yeah. the turf. Yeah. Waters, a junior from Mansfield, Texas, and uh, yeah, Missouri taking a knee, and I'm sure Alabama will take a knee and, and run this game out. Yeah. And this play occurred with 51 seconds remaining. Stretcher underneath. They've been here. They go. They do manage to get him over on his back, and so uh, Alabama will take a knee on first and ten. And that'll be it. And our thoughts with Eric Waters. Nick Saban, Gary Pinkle, the two Kent State. Teammates from uh, the MAC championship team of 1972. Uh, brief handshake at midfield, but uh, most folks' attention focused on this scene. Burke Stresser finishes uh, 12 of 29. Missouri team gathered around their fallen comrade. The final score 42-10 will let you know what we know when we come back and wrap it up after this.